Okay, this is an article from 2006 about D. Michael Quinn that I found the other day. And it's highlighting basically how he couldn't get a job even though he was a really like accomplished academic. So highlights in 1993, he was excommunicated by the LDS Church, Mormon Church, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, whatever you want to call it. And it highlighted how his writings had contradicted the church's traditional history. Now understand a lot of what he has written is now viewed as like acceptable history in the church. But at the time, a lot of those ideas were not very widespread. A lot of the gospel topics essays, they basically admitted to the types of things that Quinn had been writing about in the 80s and 90s. And those essays were coming out in 2013, 2014. So again, this article, 2006, highlighting although Mormon studies is a fast-growing academic discipline, Mr. Quinn, a former professor at BYU, author of six books on Mormon history, can't find a job. Highlighted how he is, or how he was, a leading candidate for two separate universities, and then it's going into some of the specifications uh, with that. So, main idea was that basically a lot of the funding for those jobs, those Mormon studies positions, they were coming from Mormon donors. Now understand, a lot of Mormon donors are going to be Mormon businessmen, who even though they may be competent in business, and in that respective field, that doesn't mean that they understand history at all. And so Quinn was saying, at this point I'm unhirable. He was living with his mom to save money in the town, uh, or the town east of Los Angeles. Here's a quote right here. If you want to succeed in Mormon studies, you have to make compromises and you have to tread gently. And you could argue that Quinn didn't really tread gently. This professor, she, from the U, she argued that Quinn didn't do that. Right here is another quote. So this is from a commissioner of education in the LDS church. He said, Quinn's highly regarded in his discipline. The church would not campaign against him. However, there may be a perception of Mr. Quinn in the Mormon community that would cause him in the eyes of some to be less acceptable. Uh, I don't believe that for a minute. It, a commissioner for the church saying that the church would not campaign against him. Uh, they also said that they don't engage in political activity. When look at Prop 8, there's a lot of evidence that they did. So, I mean, maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but I definitely would not just say that they didn't because they said they didn't. Okay, let's look at some more ideas here. Okay, so. School of Religion at Claremont University in California. So they had raised money. They were looking for more chairs. Mormonism, Hinduism, these different categories. Uh, Judaism, Catholicism. They highlighted that they created an advisory council composed mainly of believers. And that these councils, they were expected to raise funds and have a voice in the hiring and they said, we don't want any bomb throwers. That's what the dean of Claremont's religion school said. So according to that logic, if they were to have Scientology or Jehovah's Witness, uh, if they were to put chairs in from those positions, they would put them all in as, they would basically put in all these believers on that council, and then they wouldn't want to hire anyone, even if they're doing accurate research, they wouldn't want to hire anyone who might offend those true believers. They don't want any bomb throwers. And so Quinn, again, was, he had been critical. He had written about uh, post-manifesto polygamy. He had written about uh, true history about Joseph Smith digging for treasure, for example. This is highlighting how some schools have said that that way of doing it, it actually is in line with academic freedom because the university, not the search committee, makes the final hiring decision. That might be true, but who selected the finalist? You can have some committee that aren't scholars, they're not academics, and they could eliminate the most qualified person for the job before the university would even be able to make the choice. Okay, let's look. This is highlighting some of what he was excommunicated for. So, 
came out publicly as gay in 1996. Wrote a book about same-sex friendships and romances in the 1800s within Mormonism. Let's look at this paragraph. This is an important one, especially when the church said they wouldn't actively campaign against him. So 2003, he was a visiting professor at Yale. BYU threatened to withdraw funding for a conference it was co-sponsoring with Yale on Mormonism if Quinn was allowed to speak there. And so with that, the university, they were concerned that the conference was not to be used to promote personalities or personal complaints about the church. Yale officials insisted on the participation of Quinn, and Quinn <clears throat> was trying to compromise and basically just said that he would introduce a keynote speaker instead of give a scholarly paper. So again, when the church is saying they didn't actively campaign against Quinn, what is that? Is that not campaign campaigning against someone? Is that not campaigning against Quinn if they're threatening to withdraw funding for a conference by allowing him to speak? That sends a clear message. Even if the church says they didn't actively campaign against him, here's paragraph that's interesting. You had a, a professor that knew Quinn. He was a BYU historian, and he said even though he was a good teacher and scholar, he advised against hiring Mr. Quinn, warning that the Mormon-dominated state legislature might cut the public university's funding. That's insane that basically all of these Mormons within the state legislature would even consider doing that or that that would even be a fear. That's a clear violation of church and state. If people are willing to cut funding to a university because they don't like maybe one scholar there. This is mentioning how University of Utah, a lot of scholars, even though they liked Mike Quinn, they voted against hiring him because they were afraid that there'd be a lot of people in the Mormon community who would look unfavorably on that. Again, that shows if universities are afraid to hire someone because it might offend people in a religion, that says something about maybe the fragility of people in a religion. They can't have the history that they've been brought up with challenged. And again, that's not to summarize all Mormons, but that definitely uh, fits the definitely fits with some of them. Okay, let's look at Arizona State University. This one I found really disturbing. So Arizona State University, again, it's a state away from Utah, not even in Utah. Uh, he was looking to be hired by the Department of Religious Studies. You had a lot of the faculty like him, and they a lot of like support for him there. You look at the population of Mormons within the state, about 6% of the state's population, a lot of them close to the university. Okay, right here though, you have this big donor, I don't know how it's pronounced, Ira Fulton, big Mormon home builder, net worth of probably hundreds of millions. He is a big donor to ASU. He's a big donor to Arizona State University. And so the ASU administration, they end up vetoing Quinn being hired. And then they tried to make an argument later that he lacked the expertise to teach Christianity and uh, Judaism courses. And he goes on to say that Quinn's excommunication was discussed but had no effect on the decision. I highly doubt that. You have this email going out to faculty that... It's basically demonstrating that they had been asked to review the risks and benefits of the hire and thought that it was probably not wise to undertake such risks. So that completely contradicts what Peacock's saying here, what this administrator's saying here. ASU basically just says it's too risky to hire Quinn. You have professors that criticize the decision, probably arguing that it's not, uh, it's not honoring academic freedom. They're saying what the administration is doing is as wrong as racial or sexual discrimination. I would argue religious discrimination is as wrong as racial or sexual discrimination. Administrators stood their ground. Then you have Mr. Fulton, the big home, the big uh, donor, home builder, saying he doesn't get involved in faculty hiring. He called Mr. Quinn a nothing person. No, I'm sure the guy was a good businessman. I'm sure the guy was a good home builder. But that's incredibly disrespectful when D. Michael Quinn did a PhD at Yale and is one of the most prolific 
Mormon historians of all time. For me, this story uh, is impactful. I was a history student at Weber State University from 2014 to 2018, and I had actually reached out to D. Michael Quinn to ask if I could maybe do research with him, maybe like an assistantship, and he ended up uh, inviting me to dinner. We went out to dinner twice, and he was really nice. He was really encouraging. I ended up I'm pursuing now a PhD in uh, social science education, so a little bit different than just a PhD in history. But to I viewed Mike Quinn as a as a good guy and as a friend, and so to read about basically schools that were not hiring him just because they were afraid of offending Mormons is really sad. He worked really hard in his career, and I didn't know at that time when I shared meals with him that he was that he had been living with his mom that he was experiencing so much poverty i feel bad he paid for one of my meals and then the other one i should have paid for him but we just each paid for our own if i would have known at the time i probably would have paid for him but again i just want to highlight like the stuff that michael quinn wrote about is now like mainstream even the church admits it but they pretty much ruined this guy and he wasn't able to get hired after the fact that they were threatening to pull funding from a conference with Yale is really disturbing. And I would say we can't we can't believe their statement that they weren't campaigning against him. This big home builder donor in Arizona, do we really think that he didn't have contact with other general authorities that might have encouraged him to like make a statement to the university 